Do you also like to find hidden objects? Well, do I have the game for you? This video is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a free-to-play mobile game where you find hidden objects through beautifully crafted scenes. And, of course, it's vintage themed. Each scene is set in the 1920s, and the purpose of the game is for you to help June uncover the culprit of her sister's murder. Each scene introduces new characters, new plots, and new adventures. I actually started playing the game a few years ago after I saw someone else here on our small corner of YouTube mention it. I love the aesthetics of the game and the way it tells a really engaging story, but without being stressful. Does anyone else get stressed out by games? If you'd like a stress-free experience, I recommend downloading June's Journey, and you can do that if you click on the link in the description box. You can also click the link in the description box after downloading it for an exclusive decoration item. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS devices, as well as on PCs through Facebook games. Let's take a step back into the past and learn how to make this shawl. Hello, and welcome to a new project. So today we're going to be doing something new on this channel. Yes. You heard me right. So in case you've missed it, I think I've only mentioned it really on Instagram in a couple of vlogs, but I've recently learned how to knit. <laughs> I don't know why, I just, I, I've never really gotten into knitting, even though my mother offered to teach me a few times and she tried and I didn't get it. But now this time my friend Aurora very kindly taught me how to knit socks. I don't know, I just love the idea of knitting socks. It was wonderful. I knitted two pairs now to date. Um, and I've learned a few things. <laughs> Socks are probably not the best, easiest, most friendly beginner project, but I do enjoy it. It's something nice to have on the side. Um, and I recently had to spend some time at the hospital and I ended up finishing my socks and then I had a lot of bed rest and I had nothing to do while in bed. So I think it's nice to have a, a knitting project on the go for those times. Now, a bit of a disclaimer. The title of this video has already told you what the project is, but I'll get to it in a second. I am still a beginner knitter, so this is not going to be a tutorial on how to do this, how to do that from an expert amazing knitter. This is a, I'm probably in the same position as you where I've knitted a couple of things and I wanted to knit this. Here's, let, let's do it together, I guess. <laughs> so the project for this uh, video um, is a shawl inspired by the one that Claire wears in Atlanta. Now you don't need to be a fan of Atlanta to do this. It's just a really nice shawl. Um, and from what I understood online, it's actually based on something called a Sontag. But it, it's a sort of shawl that was be that became popular sort of in the 1860s, mid-Victorian, so not, <laughs> not 18th century at all. But I thought it looked really nice, really comfy, and I thought it could look really cute with some long skirts um, and be nice to wear in sort of mid-season or in the winter. You know, just, you know, Scottish hillside vibes, you know? That kind of aesthetic. <laughs> Now I know she wears a couple of different shawls across the seasons. The one I'm going to be doing is identified here as Claire's Rent Shawl. This is a pattern by Louise Bolanos uh, from a blog called Handy Little Me. I'll leave the link in the description box. It's a free pattern um, and she says it's an intermediate level, but a couple of people on Instagram told you I might be able to do it, so. <laughs> uh, so a couple of things is that these this gives you instructions. They look good to me. My friend is gonna help me because or it's gonna help me because she's heaven sent. But yeah, let's maybe talk about materials. Uh, so they recommend a five millimeter needle, which I think they say is a US eight in case you're there. Um, and they recommend a circular because obviously it's very, it's very long, like the shawl. Um, but I think from what I understand, the basic way to knit it is, it's basically a triangle. It's a shawl that's a triangle and then you tie it behind your back and it looks like an overlapping thing. It looks really nice. So I bought this needle, uh, I bought all of my supplies in the same place, it was a website called Wool Warehouse and one of the things that was really important to me was to keep this project low cost because obviously knitting is not my main jam and uh, I didn't, I'm obviously not an experienced knitter so I didn't want to invest into really high quality yarn because it's probably not going to be a really high quality knit, do you know what I mean? Like it's still like a practice knitting thing. So um, I but I did want natural fiber, so I ended up buying a 100% wool yarn, which looks like this, in a sort of brown color. Um, I'll leave the details of the brand and stuff in the description box in case you're interested. So the way you have to look for yarn is that your pattern will tell you the tension, and the tension is something called a gauge. I don't know, I don't know. My friend told me to look for that number when I looked for, for yarn. So I looked for a yarn that had a similar tension otherwise you're gonna have to mess up the pattern 
and this yarn on Ravelry said it had the same number of stitches as the yarn required for this so I went with it. It was also pretty affordable and I bought uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of the balls in the brown and then two in this grey for like a stripe at the end. I think that'll look pretty cute. And then so each ball of yarn was unknown. It was like three pounds, three pounds, I would say. And so the total for this project was 50 pounds, which is quite a lot. No one warned me that knitting was this expensive. Like it's as expensive as sewing, if not more. Um, but yeah, so I really wanted to keep the cost down by trying to buy the cheapest yarn that I could find. And obviously because it is quite cheap yarn, it's super scratchy, but I can live with that to save a couple bucks. So those are my materials and I've got the pattern and then the next step after you've got your materials together is you need to knit something like this which is called a gauge and this is so that you know that your, your yarn will work in the same way as the yarn used for the pattern so you know that the rows and the stitches will work out. It's not a really poor description, I don't really understand. I, I understand the purpose of it but it's, I don't know. So I knit, I knit it and uh, it became clear that although the stitches were the same, so the pattern asks for 18 stitches and 4 inches of this is 18 stitches, the rows are not. So the pattern asks for 30 rows and this is actually 34 rows. So my friend Aurora is going to come over in a minute and help me to figure out how to adapt the pattern to make sure it reflects that. But what I think that means is that I'm gonna to have to sew, I'm gonna to have to knit more rows to have the same amount of knit, if that makes any sense to you. Whatever, I'll let you know how that goes. Um, but yeah, so I should be ready to cast on today and do some little pattern scribbles, cast on today, and then just start knitting. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna let you know how it goes. So, Three weeks have passed since the previous clip where I told you about my grand plans for this shawl and uh, the plans have changed quite dramatically but I didn't want to show you how the plans had changed until I knew for certain that they would work. Apologies for the mess, we are packing up to move. <laughs> uh, so it's actually been really nice to have a knitting project that I can just have on the side because I've had to pack away all of my sewing stuff. So this is the shawl so far. So uh, in the previous clip I told you I'll be using this online pattern, free pattern, uh, and I did try it out under the tutelage of my amazing friend Aurora, she's a very accomplished knitter and she's the one that's basically been coaching me through all the knitting process, uh, but sadly I couldn't get the hang of it. So the way that pattern was telling you to build the shawl, so the shawl is just a big triangle, right? Um, and the way they were telling you to do it is that you start at the tip and then you add stitches as you go. And I think Aura said this was a method called lacing or like lace, adding stitch, whatever. And you grow out the triangle. So this means that if you wanted to do two colours, as in like one main colour and a stripe, at some point you'd be working with like four different yarns. And I got as far as working with three and got overwhelmed, so I couldn't do it. So then I sat down with Aurora and taking the measurements that are given in that pattern, we figured out our own method to try and do it. So those, the pattern that I mentioned did describe itself as an intermediate and I would say from a beginner's perspective that I agree. So instead we have devised a beginner friendly method, uh, all, <laughs> I couldn't have done this without Aurora, please, thank you so much. But. I thought I would tell you a little bit how we're doing it so that if you're a beginner you can also try doing this. So instead of doing starting a triangle and starting at like the bottom tip or whatever, we're doing we divide the triangle into two and we're doing two halves and then uniting them at the middle. So what I have here is one half that's been concluded and I wanted to see if it would be successful before I told you this is how it's gonna happen. So taking the measurements, uh, I'll insert the measurements maybe down below. Uh, so you can see what it looks like. But basically we did a bunch of a bunch of calculations based on the dimensions given and the gauge of the and the in my gauge and the gauge of the pattern and worked out that to have a size L, 
which is what the pattern told you to do, I had to cast on 265 stitches. Uh, 260, is that right? No, 207 stitches on each long edge. So the way you were doing it is that you cast on on this long edge and then you decrease as you go. And so what you have to do is for a size L in this case, which is larger than 68 inches across the bit that's meant to wrap around you. I'll show you the notebook in a second just so you can see what it looks like. Um, yeah, so it will it will be roughly 207 stitches on the needle and then it's 302 rows to approximately 84 inches. I don't know if that's right. But the way we're doing it is that uh, one side is slightly longer, which is the side that wraps around you. So I finished that half and now I'm going to mirror it and start the second half. But so you're basically just knitting the two triangles and then attaching them to make one long one. I just thought this was the easiest way to do it. And to the crease, we're doing one side is a uh, slip slip knit and the other side is knit two together. Uh, the sides are not even, so one side has 97 stitches and one side has 110 stitches. Uh, and then you decrease on, you decrease alternatively. So the way the pattern, the original pattern had you do it was that you would knit one row, decrease one row, uh, increase one row, knit one row, increase one row. So we're doing the same here, but because they're not the same, you can only do that when you catch up. So the way we decided to do it was that the longer side would be decreased every other row and the shorter side would be decreased uh, every two rows. So I made a little key. <laughs> Uh, let's see if you can see this. Here we go. So you start, yeah, so you start by decreasing both and then you do a normal row, then you decrease one side. So the shapes are the shapes of my markers. <laughs> so you know, you gotta make it work for yourself. If you have any questions because this explanation isn't very clear, just please write them down below. So yeah, so I'm now gonna do the second half and then I can go a bit more into detail about the process because I know it works. So first let's cast on. Okay, so you hold, wait no, you have to do a bunch right, a, a really long yeah. string. Okay so this is, we're casting on 200 and something stitches. Yeah. It's always this chaotic I swear. <laughs> We're casting on 207 stitches. Okay, casting on 207 stitches. So you have to leave loads of yarn. Is this about right, do you reckon? It's a bit more, I see. Just because I don't like having too much. Running shorts. out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this? Yeah. Okay, my teacher is here. So the loose bit, the end, goes on the left and the ball yeah. goes on the right. Yeah. And then you do, so the whole point of it is that you put the yarn over your thumb and then around your third finger and then you hold both the tail and the yarn with your fourth and fifth finger and you keep tension on it with your second and third finger and then you go under you do one twist and then you bring that down this is not very clear is it and then you bring that down here and then with the point of the needle you go under the yarn under the yarn and then back in through and you pull and that keeps the tension there and then you don't have to really release the yarn at any point and then you just keep doing it for 207 stitches Like that, right? Okay, I'll just look over to a rough rubber. Yeah. So uh under yarn, under yarn, under inside, and then you pull. And that tightens it. Like that. And then you just keep going. Just make sure you're not pulling the tension too tight on here, because it'll be really hard to do your first row of stitches. 
and I know this from experience. <laughs> <laughs> I am a very anxious knitter where I try to knit a lot and then you can't get your stitches in and you have to undo the whole thing. So that's great fun. So I just wanted to lay out the shawl so that you could see the full length of it and maybe try and stand a bit more. Sorry about the shadows, the whole house we're, we're moving, <laughs> so you get the bed today. So this is the length of the shawl. So this is only half of it and now I'm now knitting the second half. So I've used my little markers to colour code my sides. So this is the whole of the triangle, this is the shorter edge, this is the longer edge and this is what's on the needle. So I've colour coded my pink circle to be the longer edge and my uh, purple square to be the shorter edge. And so on here, this is the first one I've knit, so this is the uh, longer edge and that's the shorter edge. And then I've mirrored it so that this side is the shorter edge and this side is the longer edge. So that I will be able to connect this side to that side into a full shawl. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. But I just wanted to give you a little bit more information about where I am now and the strip, the stripe, strip, stripe. So uh, I did 14 rows after the cast on and then I started the stripe. The stripe is 10 rows uh, wide and yeah, I'm just doing that now. So I'll just keep knitting. I just wanted a really clear shot of my little decreasing key as well. So the whole point is that you cast on all the stitches and then you decrease as you go towards the top tip. However, because one side is longer than the other, one has to decrease faster to end up matching up in the middle. So um, the square side, which is the shorter side, gets decreased every two rows and that's just by, depending on which side you're facing, knitting two together or doing a slip slip knit. And then the circle gets decreased every other row. So after casting on, I did, I think, one row of normal, and then I started by decreasing both, then a row of normal, then only decreasing the circle, then only decreasing the square, then only the circle, then normal, then both. And it just repeats until the pattern repeats again. And I've just been ticking off as I go to make sure I know which one I'm on. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention as well is when you start the stripe, you need to make sure that you're on the right side because the underside creates this when you change colors. So just make sure you're on the right side to start and finish the stripe. Did I have anything else to mention? No, I think that's it. I was just doing some knitting and I realized I haven't actually checked in invoice in a long time. So um, I've just, something's happened that's changed. So I wanted to tell you what it was. So I've knitted as, knit, 
do it every time. As I've told you, following the little decreasing sheet sheet um, until I now have even numbers, even numbers, the same number of stitches on either side of the middle point. So now it gets way easier if you <laughs> So you don't no longer need the sheet sheet. Now all you have to do is do one row of decreasing, one, one row of normal, one row of decreasing, one row of normal, etc, etc, until you have three stitches left. That's it. Uh, and yeah, this is how it is. So now let's just proceed. Okay, so I've just finished uh, the other side and I thought it was time for an update. I, so eventually, when you reach the top of your triangle, you'll only have three stitches left. At that point you will stop and you will cast off those three stitches and then leave a tail. So then the next step, now that I have these two triangles, is to join them into one massive triangle. And the shorter side should be the back and then those should be the edges that go over your shoulders. So let's pray that's right. Okay, so my friend Aurora has come through, as always, and she first sent me a tutorial, which I think is the proper way to do it, but mine is slightly different because um, we're not joining two straight edges of the knit bits, we're joining diagonals. So she said to just freehand it, and I was like, okay. So you're going to put the two shorter sides of the triangles together right sides facing each other. This does have a right side because as you can see, when you do the, the stripe, there's one bit that looks like that. It actually looks quite cool. So if you prefer that to the boring old strip, just use it like that. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna do this. And I'm also, just before I start the seam, I'm actually just gonna weave in my ends that are here, just so that they're out of the way. And I'll show you what I'm going to attempt. Okay, so ends are in. I have my two shorter halves, shorter edges of the triangles, <sighs> pinned together here, right sides facing each other. Um, I just clip them together just to make sure that firstly the stripe at the end is matching up as best as I can, and then just that I don't like make it go wonky. So what you'll need is a tapestry needle threaded with matching yarn or not matching, depending on what you're going for. And Aurora has told me that uh, you start at the top and you do a stitch where you go from the I'm, I'm to a close up from the outside to the inside on one side, and then you do it from the outside to the inside on the other side. Now I have seen this stitch in actual sewing before, but I don't remember the name of it. But if you do remember it, please let me know because it will annoy me. Uh, and then you leave a long tail at the start so that you can weave that back in. And yeah, we're gonna give it a go, you know? And then the other thing Aurora mentioned, hopefully my close-up can show you, is that on these edges, there is like a little bit that is a bump, like this. Where's the best way to show you that? Like this. Yeah, there's a little bit that is a bump, like this, and then like a dip in between. And this is where you want to be putting your stitch, is in the dip in between the two knots. So, going up this top bit, I find it quite hard to tell what the heck is going on. But, we are attempting. And if this doesn't work, I mean, got two nice triangles. And that is it. Now we have a beautifully knitted shawl. 
I know that was a bit of a knitting experiment and if you're a more advanced knitter there is a pattern recommendation in the description box. I really do think this is a lovely item to have. It's so comfortable, you can wear it around the house, you can wear it outside now that it's getting chillier and yeah I think it was a really really good project. Um, if you have any questions about the construction or the sort of patterns that me and my friend made up leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. Um, a quick note on size, so this was according to that pattern that I mentioned in the beginning. This was based on their dimensions for an L. I am a UK size 14 and I think this works well. Um, they did mention that you can increase or decrease by 40 stitches so I would recommend that considering even with the numbers that I've given you for the pattern here. And if you do make it please tag me on Instagram I would like to see it because I just love I love the vibes you know and I really I really want to see more people with this kind of shawl. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to download the game, it's a really cool vintage theme relaxing game. It is down in the description box. And tune in again next week if you want to see how I made that really cute Outlander inspired outfit from the beginning of the video. See you next week.